one of the reasons that you're not channeling is because you want to be perfect. You're either afraid you're going to get it wrong and someone will notice. You want to have the smartest answer. You're comparing yourself to others who are further along or even different from you. But here's the thing. Perfectionism is a trauma response. Perfectionism actually pinches off your intuitive channel. But in my experience, there is a joyful way to neutralize perfectionism and all of the other apparent blocks that keep you from fully stepping into your calling as a channel. So when you neutralize perfectionism, your intuitive channel naturally opens up so you can be confident and joyful about the messages that come through. You begin to transmit the frequencies and codes that only you can. Truth is, there aren't too many intuitive channels out there, but there are far too few intuitive channels who are tuned in to precise and accurate signals, unmuddied by perfectionism, fear of being wrong, or worried about what other people think. And there are still too few intuitive channels that allow the highest and purest frequencies like wealth consciousness to flow through them. Restoring your intuitive channel is the next step on your journey to fulfilling your true calling. In my experience, the best way to start restoring your intuitive channel is to deeply understand the nuances of your nervous system and your personality as a whole. And I can help you with that. So when you have a clear understanding of your profile as an intuitive channel, the need to be perfect melts away and you discover the true essence of the frequencies that you're meant to allow to flow through you. See, I've been channeling and interpreting personality profiles of intuitive channels for years now using the Neo personality profile. You've heard me talk about that before if you've been following me for any period of time. The Neo is the gold standard of personality assessments. And using the Neo, I can pinpoint your exact channel frequency, as well as your actual capabilities that you're meant to express as an intuitive channel. When I interpret your new Neo personality profile, I'm able to show you why your personality is uniquely wired for channeling. And I review the precise mechanism through which you are able to bring messages through. I'm also able to pinpoint and clear the exact blocks, including perfectionism that make, make your channel muddy to begin with. And of course, this makes me so happy to do this. There's nothing that feels better than being able to clear some of these apparent blocks that have been keeping you from really truly stepping into becoming the channel. And here's the thing, not everybody channels in the same way. And sometimes the human mind requires some reassurance. That's understandable. And you do need to know that you're not going to go crazy if you channel, you're not going to lose your mind if you channel, and I can show you exactly why this isn't going to happen. And then on top of that, I'll guide you to the purest and highest frequency that's meant to flow through your intuitive channel. This is the game changer. So here's the thing. If you want me to help you understand your unique intuitive channel profile, then I want you to consider this your invitation into a new aspect of your identity. What's your identity? Your identity is that of an intuitive channel. So I've made intuitive channel profiling sessions available to my community. I'm so excited to start offering these. Well, truth is I've been offering them all along, but finally I'm really landing in this framework of helping you identify yourself as an intuitive channel with a unique channeling profile, and then helping you open up your channel so that you can start receiving the messages, the information, the frequencies that are meant to come through you specifically. So if you think you have some ability as an intuitive channel, and chances are, if you're listening to my podcast, you probably do, or even if you've been channeling for most of your life and you're ready to fully shine your light into the world, because you know, it's time to really do precisely that then you're invited to just send me an email, robin at drrobinmckay.com and tell me that you want to learn more about the Neo profile for intuitive channels. And I'll share you the details of this one-of-a-kind initiation in, that masterfully bridges science with spirit and even more importantly, initiates you into your true calling for such a time as this.
I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Email me now. Okay, so that is my big announcement this week is that the intuitive, intuitive channel profiling sessions are open and available. And they are going to fly off the shelves, if you will, metaphorically speaking. And the reason that they are is because really, truly, this is the time for those of us who are wired as intuitive channels to bring ourselves fully online and to start receiving the frequencies, the information, the messages that are meant to come through specifically you and specifically me. And today on the podcast, I was really guided to share more about the reasons why people aren't channeling or are hesitant to start channeling, or maybe you channel, but you're channeling in the closet or you're not telling people that you're a channel or, you know, there are any number of iterations of that. And the reason, again, that this is so important is because really from now, this is, if you're listening to this when I'm recording it, it's the end of October, 2023, and into next year, 2024 and beyond, there are going to be, there's an increasing call for people who are really clear, concise, precise, intuitive channels that aren't channeling the low vibe frequencies of poverty consciousness or the ah shucks frequencies of, you know, I don't know if I'm doing this right, but really are stepping into their, not just their spiritual gifts, but are really calibrating and anchoring into the fact that your spiritual gifts can actually become supernatural abilities. And the pathway there really is by understanding the, the profile of the intuitive channel, first of all, and to understand if you're called to channel. And this is a really interesting question. You know, I talk about being called to stuff all the time. I used to have a program called Called to Corporate, right? Where I was teaching spiritual entrepreneurs like you, like me, how to land corporate clients, even when you're as woo as I am. And it is possible. And certainly that's something that I still love to do as well. But even before you get to the point of like working with other people, it's really important that you really identify who you are. So I want to share with you some of the background on why I'm doing this, this these channel profile sessions, and also give you some more information on what's stopping you from really stepping into being a channel and what you can do about it. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so why aren't you channeling? I wanna start by saying this, that I've worked with intuitive and very, very bright accomplished women, especially for a long, long time now. It's been probably, let's see, 2000, we'll start counting at like 2005. We'll put that as kind of the start date of it. It was probably before that, but just for a kind of a marker, 2005. So 2020 would have been 15. So 18 years, we'll call it. I've been doing this work for 18 years and I've been giving the Neo for that long as well. And one of the commonalities of all of the people who find their way to me for the Neo. Now, this is not across the board. And if you interviewed another person who's got a PhD in psychology, who also gives the Neo, their population, who they're serving, who they're interpreting the Neo for is going to look quite different from mine. But one of the things that I was really able to do early on is really truly understand who I'm here to serve. And so as a result of that, the intuitive, emotionally intelligent, very, very bright women would come to me. And what I would identify in their personality profiles were some really unique characteristics in the population, including what I believe to be the hallmark or the marker of somebody who has a potential to be an intuitive channel. And that was very exciting for me. And actually I remember, oh my goodness, all these years ago, I was, I had helped to found the Clios lab, the creativity laboratory for the exploration of optimal states. And Barb and I, my mentor from grad school started this back in, I think it was 2005. Yeah, it was 2005. And so we were testing, we were giving the Neo to all of these creative kids that we had asked teachers to identify. We had specific profiles set up descriptions of them, basically. These are the kids that we want to 
be able to support in their career development. These are the kids that we want to be able to support in their personal and emotional and social development as well. So I had all of these NEO assessments for probably about 200 middle school and high school kids from the state of Kansas. And I started looking and doing data analysis and doing cluster analyses and trying to understand like what were the what were the qualities and the characteristics of these particular people who are coming into the lab? And I'll never forget, I, I remember exactly where I was when I found this tiny, tiny cluster of spiritually intelligent young people, ages about 15 to 17. They were into things like Reiki and meditation and Sufism and all kinds of really at the time, remember this is 2005, I mean, it's not ancient history, but it was certainly a long time ago. They were into some things that were pretty unusual at the time, especially for young people. And I was so excited, but even more than being so excited, I knew I had hit the nail on the head when I discovered these young people. I literally had their names and their email addresses and I had all of their data because they were part of this research study that we were doing. And that really became the, the nexus, I'll say, of this work that I do even now in, in identifying and profiling intuitive channels all those years ago. Isn't that remarkable? It's fascinating to me how life comes full circle. And now there's this new iteration of how I'm using the NEO, but who I'm using it for. And this time, all these years later, 18 years later, 18 years later, now we've got this world where more now more than ever before, people are awake to what's actually going on on the planet. Spiritual gifts are coming online. People are moving through existential crises and burnout and all of those things and coming out on the other end and really starting to adopt spiritual practices, are starting to understand their own spiritual gifts, their own intuition in ways that are unprecedented, I believe, compared to what was going on in past times. And this is good news because now more than ever before, there are frequencies, there are beings of light from other dimensions and other, other systems, I'll say, in this vast universe that we live in, who are here specifically for a benevolent purpose to come to the assistance of humanity and to liberate consciousness and to restore our supernatural abilities to us so that our planet is ours again, so that the darkness flees. And I think that that's a really wonderful meta level explanation for why now, why now am I talking about intuitive channeling and why now are we profiling and explaining who you are to yourself? Because there have been a lot of question marks that people who are intuitive have about channeling, including myself, you know, historically, when I came online, I always say I took adult responsibility for my spiritual gifts right around the year 2000. And almost immediately, I was drawn into learning and studying shamanism and training with intuition teachers and learning all of these different modalities and ways of knowing in the world with the primary mission of understanding myself. One of my teachers in grad school said, research is me search. And it was really true. Everything that I was doing was on a basic level to understand who I am, how I show up in the world, why I am the way I am, and what the hell I'm supposed to be doing with my life. Because I knew I wasn't meant to be like a stay-at-home soccer mom living in Kansas and wearing tennis bracelets and getting my nails painted on Thursday afternoons. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I just knew that that was not my life. And so, although I don't know, maybe I would argue at this point that there is something wrong with that because it's time to wake up. If that's you, it's time to wake up because there's more to life than that. I will say that. And so I started working with my first spiritual teacher, Sonia Choquette, who identified as a channel. She identified as somebody who communicated with beings off planet. Um, she had all of these guides that she would work with from the Pleiades and um, different timelines and different 
yeah, just different dimensions. And I was fascinated by that. And I would watch her channel beings. And she wrote a couple of channeled books. And one book she wrote was on um, from, uh, channeled by this group of beings from the sun. I think it was from the seventh ray of the sun. And they were, it was potent. And I really think that was one of my first activations to working with the sun frequencies. And I'll say more about that in a little, little while, but that was one of my first activations to working with the sun frequencies. And then simultaneously to that, I was working with, she called herself an urban shaman. She lived in Kansas city and she was, refer, I was referred to her by my therapist at the time after I had conducted my own soul retrieval. And he was like, as I reported that to him, he said, well, if you can do that for yourself, you can do it for other people and you need to meet Jody. So I started working with Jody and she introduced me to another group of beings from the sun called the four columns of light who are at the center of the sun. So I've had all of these sun activations early on, in addition to the fact that I was always somebody who loved to be in the sun. I love to lay out in the sun and, you know, I grew up in the eighties, so it was all baby oil and, you know, no sunscreen and everything, but I've always just had this connection and alliance with the sun that was indescribable up until like now when I finally understand what's actually going on. So Sonia channeled, I was learning to channel beings like the, the uh, four columns of light from the center of the sun. I was studying channeling because there were other spiritual teachers who were talking about being channels. And there was Seth in the Seth Speak series, which, oh my God, talk about, if you want to put yourself to sleep, try reading one of those, be those books. It's complex. The frequencies are weird. Like I go cross-eyed when I'm trying to read that stuff and I couldn't figure out why that was. And now I know probably it was just a weird frequency coming through that wasn't appropriate for me to be reading anyway. And then along came Abraham Hicks. I think that they published their first book like in 2004. So I was in grad school at the time studying to get my PhD in counseling psychology, which was a very conservative research-based buttoned up field of practice. And there I was over learning from Abraham Hicks and Sonia Choquette and the shamans and having all of these mystical experiences of my own and trying to make sense of everything and sort of integrating what I was learning in my spiritual intelligence apprenticeship. And also, and also learning clinical diagnoses and treatment of mental illness and understanding mental illness and, and things like that. So it was a very interesting time in my life, but I share this with you because I started really paying attention to channeling all of those years ago. Well, I always knew I was intuitive. In fact, early in my business, I actually taught an intuition development class at Southwest Institute of Healing Arts. So I would do that. On, you know, after my day job, I would do all of these um, kind of on the side things. And it was fine. I found it a little bit draining. And I also found like I was just repeating what other people had taught. It was nothing new, um, but I was positioning myself definitely as an intuition teacher. So all this to say that by the time I'll say like 2019 rolled around, I was really like, and I was watching people who were identifying as channels in the spiritual entrepreneurship community. And the thing about that was that I would watch them and I would think to myself, well, I can do that because I knew I could. I'd been channeling for a long time privately in my writings and my speaking, my guides would come through sometimes and just speak to me out loud so that I could hear something in a different way. And I remember I spent an entire session, coaching session with my beloved eight-figure mentor, Jennifer, focusing on somebody else channeling. And I was spun up by this. And it wasn't like it was competition at all. It was just like me more almost bemoaning, why is she doing this and I'm not doing this? Why is she out there as a channel? And I'm sitting back here with my PhD you know, still teaching corporate client attraction and working with people on burnout. 
there was, by the way, nothing wrong with that. It was just that I knew intuitively that I was called to channel, even though I couldn't say that. And I remember during that session, I said, I feel like that's all I do is channel. I, cha I listened to something once from somebody, a teacher, and I've been able to do this for a long, long time. And then I'll just, it's not that I'm parroting it. I just integrate it. And then I teach it. And she said to me, on that day, she said, then it is time for you to finally acknowledge that you are a channel, that you are a channel, Robin. <sighs> and the relief that I felt that washed over me, that I acknowledged that, yeah, I am a channel. And I didn't know what that would look like in the coming months or years, but I did finally acknowledge that this is I don't think I was quite to the point where it was my destiny, but it was definitely like, yes, I am somebody who is a channel. And I know that I am meant to channel somebody. I know that I am meant to work with a, a benevolent, high frequency light being. I know that. And for a while, early on, after I acknowledged that, there were groups of, of beings who would come in and I would have conversations with them, but it was more conversational. It was like, they're not, they're happy to communicate with me and they appreciate that I'm willing to share their messages like the Lumerian High Council that I that I worked with for a while. Um, the, the chapters that I channeled in the book that came out earlier this year, Akashic Wisdom, um, I channeled Seraphis Bay, um, who's a dear ally. Um, but ultimately where I landed up until recently was that I'm channeling wealth consciousness. And so where I finally landed earlier this year was the best place to start with channeling was to learn how to channel wealth consciousness. In fact, what I've come to believe and understand is that wealth consciousness frequency actually acts as a portal or a gateway into these higher frequencies that are available to us, including high frequency benevolent beings of light, like Marisol, who is my new and also very familiar and also very present companion from the 18th, 18th dimension from Vega, the star in the constellation Lyra, uh, who is partnering with me and channeling high frequencies around spiritual intelligence and coding the, the nervous system to become the clear channel for high frequencies, including and beginning with wealth consciousness. So all this to say that when I really started understanding, first of all, that I myself am called to channel, then I had to dial it in and decide what exactly am I meant to be channeling? And I received guidance on that. And the first thing is learn how to channel wealth consciousness and do that. And then let's see what else opens up. When I did that, that is when finally, I would say finally, Marisol, my companion, my counterpart from Lyra has come through now. And now she is available in and anchored in my system to be able to channel as well. Now that's the way that I channel and the way that you channel is going to be different based on your personality, based on your worldview, based on your expertise, based on your profession. There are all of these variables that contribute to the frequency that you channel, the modality through which you channel. Do you do you speak light language like my friend Andrea? Do you send energy through your hand? Is that hands? Is that how you channel? What is your primary modality of channeling? And what is the frequency that you're channeling? So in terms of profiling it, intuitive channels, then that's where the fun stuff came in for me. And remember, I started doing that years ago. I didn't call it channeling at the time. I didn't know what that was. I knew that they were intuitive kids way back at, at the University of Kansas when I was in grad school. And I knew early in my, in my coaching and consulting career that the people who were coming to me had the potential to be highly spiritually intelligent, but maybe weren't expressing it. Maybe they were closeted in their intuition and they were definitely placing primacy on their intellect, on their reason. 
and downgrading their intuition to some kind of throwaway sense that um, they would go to kind of behind the scenes when they were in a pinch, but ultimately they would always refer first to their intellect, their reason. And these are, remember, these are the physicians and the engineers and the attorneys and the, the high-performing salespeople. Everybody's coming from the intellect. And yet there was this deep-seated and very present acknowledgement of the intuition. It just was primarily latent, I would say, for them or unacknowledged at, at the very least. So when I started looking at people's profiles who actually identified as intuitive channels, that's where the fun really came in for me because now I was looking at people's profiles who were, I, if, I, if they're not fully expressed as, as intuitive channels, they are, they're doing the work of channeling. So I've had Christina, the channel on the podcast, and she's somebody who has talked very openly about her experience with the Neo and Jennifer Longmore and Elise Bassine and Andrea Donnelly and all of these beautiful intuitive channels who are channeling high frequencies. They are working with, with high frequency light beings from other dimensions and other timelines. And they are also, they've also mastered channeling wealth consciousness. So I want to share some of the characteristics of the intuitive channels who I've had the honor and the opportunity to profile using the NEO. And I want you to see what are those characteristics that stand out for you? In other words, what are those characteristics that you're kind of like, yeah, that kind of sounds like me, because that's going to give you some clues to your own calling as a channel and also perhaps give you clues to how you're meant to be channeling information and frequencies into, into our planet right now. So I wanna start with really the hallmark of the intuitive channels profile, and that is a high openness to new experiences score. We already know like the research for the last probably 20 or so years on creative people tells us that openness to experiences is the hallmark of the creative personality. Well, in my observation and the data that I have collected over the past about 10 years, as I've been working with people who identify as intuitive or even as intuitive channels, it turns out that openness to experiences is also seen in all of the people who identify as intuitive and who are practicing as intuitive channels. So when we talk about openness to experiences, we look at six different facets of personality. We look at hi being highly imaginative, being able to see multiple timelines and multiple potentials and to see what's possible, but also in terms of like literally being able to see holograms, auras, energies, subtle energies that other people can't see or are not aware of. It's not just in their mind's eye that they can see it. It's actually literally in their physical world that they can see these essences, these, ener these subtle energies that most people either aren't aware of or cannot see. So that's the, the high imagination, or it's called fantasy as the, as the, um, the facet on the Neo. If I were to map that particular facet with a particular Claire, I would say it would be mapped to clairvoyance, meaning clear seeing. But what I found with the intuitive channels is that we all have a unique way of seeing the world. And we all see things that other people cannot see. And we all have ways of perceiving energy that goes beyond the simple, I just see something or imagine something in my mind's eye. So for example, I often will see um, consciousness, souls, spirits that have passed, especially when they are very strongly connected with somebody who's living. So you you may have heard me tell this story. I can't remember what podcast episode it was in, but when I was in grad school, I had a kid in his early 20s come to me having significant panic attack out of the blue and he couldn't understand why it was so he was in a triage appointment with me and while I was helping him just get grounded and stable in his energy field again it 
was revealed to me through his spoken word first. He said he had just gotten back from his friend's funeral and his friend had been killed in the, uh, by an IED in Iraq or Afghanistan or something like that um, just days before and had his body had been sent home and he had just gotten back from the funeral. Well, as the kid who's sitting in my office is describing this, the, the dead kid who had just been killed, his consciousness comes through and is superimposed on the kid who's in my office who's alive. So I can see very clearly this consciousness, this, this young man who no longer has a body. <clears throat> so as I was helping my live young man calm his panic, which was actually the panic of the young man who had just been killed, I simultaneously was ushering the young man who had just been killed into his next, into his next phase of his of his existence that was beyond this 3D realm. So that's an example of how my, I wouldn't even call that my inner vision because it literally, I see it with my physical eyes. So I don't have a good word for that. Maybe it's my sacred vision. Maybe that's a good way to describe it. And maybe you have something like that too, but that would map into that particular facet of personality that's called fantasy or imagination. And then the second facet that I see with not all intuitive channels have this, but many of them do, they have a heightened awareness of their own emotions and the emotions of other people. So they're hyper aware of it, meaning that they can not just feel their own emotions, but they can feel the emotions of other people. And that can be a little bit confusing sometimes because you're not taught as a kid that just because you feel something doesn't mean it's yours. And it's hard to discern and interpret, is this mine or somebody else's until you're aware that that's even a question you can, you can and should be asking. But that is one of the qualities that I see in many of these intuitive channels is this heightened focus, this heightened awareness of emotions, hyper emotionality, if you will, not that they're emotionally reactive, but they're just very, very sensitive to emotions. And that would map to that clairsentience of the four clairs, clairsentience, the clear feeling, but it goes beyond again, just having the, the awareness of somebody else's emotions. It's literally feeling the emotions in the body. Then we have this unique, this unique aspect of personality that's called, um, it's a need for change. It's a need to go to new places and try new things, to try new foods, to do different things. But that is also very heightened in a lot of the intuitive channels that I see. So if you've got a wanderlust vibe in you where you, you know, you've got to scratch the itch to travel or you got to scratch the itch to go new places and try new things there's a good chance that probably you're in this, in this unique category, if you will, of people who are called the channel. And then let's see, we also have this lifelong love of learning. It's a love of ideas that comes forward in this overall openness factor, which I would say across the board, all of the intuitive channels have this just deep seated need to learn as much as we can about whatever it lights us up. Now we could also associate that probably with some ADHD, you know, going down the rabbit hole and becoming hyper-focused on a particular topic, or maybe a little bit spectrum-y even where we get a little bit overly enthusiastic about, about a particular um, topic. But nonetheless, it's all very exciting when, when you find something that you love so much and you can't wait to learn as much as possible about it. This is something that I see in intuitive channels and it really does help us to explore the, you know, the edges of our field. And at the edges of the field, guess what happens? There are opportunities to innovate and there are opportunities to reach across the field and to shake hands with new beings and new forms of life and new possibilities that we weren't aware of before. So the, the lifelong exploration and, and, and learning is such a, an important element to the people who are called to channel.
Okay. And then we have another facet of the openness factor that's called aesthetics. And people who score high on aesthetics have a deep-seated requirement for beauty in our lives. There are people, beings, in human form, I'll say, who can work in a room with white walls and no windows and be perfectly content. But those who identify as an intuitive channel will often say that beauty is not optional. In fact, I, I'm here to channel beauty. I'm here to bring beauty into the world. And so that is another marker for you or another, another point to look at for yourself. Are you somebody who does value beauty? Are you somebody who arranges things in a beautiful way? Do you care, not in a vain way about your appearance, but are you adorning your body with, with beauty? Are you adorning, adorning your body with, with oils? Are you paying attention to how you look, not just for selfies, for any selfish purpose, but actually because your appearance is actually intuitively, you know this, a contribution to the beauty of the world. And I have found for me, this is certainly the case that the beauty that I have in my hair and how my face is shaped and my eyes, these are all important contributions that I have to make in the world that for a long time I had no idea about and I didn't understand. All I knew is that some people were triggered by how I looked and I didn't understand it. And I also have begun to understand that a lot of times when I was feeling unattractive or ugly, it actually was a projection from the person who was looking at me in comparison to me. So it wasn't even mine, but I was taking it on as mine and feeling very confused by that. I didn't understand. But if you have a, a profound requirement for beauty in your life, chances are pretty good that that's going to be an indicator that you are possibly called to channel. Now, I would say that those, in addition to this one, here's, here's the one that I, that I love. This one is willingness to challenge the status quo. And by willingness, I just mean that you're wired to challenge the status quo. You're wired to rock the boat. You're wired to speak truth, even when it's unpopular. You're wired to question religious, societal, and political standards. And that can be, you know, obviously very triggering for some people when you come forward and say the, the things you might be saying about religion or politics or, or social values. And yet as a channel, that's one of the things that that's one of the reasons I believe that we are invited, selected to be part of this generation, this wave of light leaders who are coming forward and speaking truth in new ways and shedding light on things that are no longer working in this, on this planet, in this world. I have one, I wanna share this. So status quo is when you see somebody, you don't say, if you're not, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything. That was how I was raised. I was raised in South Dakota by conservative family members. Um, so, uh, my mom was in a sorority when she was in college. So I learned all of the sorority manners. And if you can't say something nice, don't say anything. But my eyes see when somebody is reptilian. I can see it, it's an immediate knowing. And I can see it in their eyes and in their field that they're reptilian. And I speak that, not necessarily to their face, but I will say it. And it is not a popular, it's not a popular statement that I make. And it's a little bit disarming for people that I would say something like that. And they think that I'm joking. And I will tell you that I am not joking when I, when I say that somebody has reptilian energy, it's because it's true. And also I will say things because they're true and people take them as compliments. When I tell somebody that they're very, very bright, they'll say, well, thank you. And I say, I'm not saying this to be nice to you. I'm saying it because it's true because I can read intellectual frequency. So I don't say that things to flatter people and I don't say things to insult people either. I just say them because they're true. And maybe that's something that you do as well. And this is something that is valued by the, the, benevolent beings of light who are waiting 
waiting to connect with you. But in order for them to connect with you fully in partnership as a channel, you first have to learn how to channel wealth consciousness. This is like a prerequisite. And then after you learn to channel wealth consciousness, then you also have to look at what else is going on in my personality that might be preventing me from fully expressing myself as an intuitive channel. And there are some things that can happen there, aren't there, as you know. So this is the kind of the point of this whole podcast is what's blocking you. So now that you've identified, yeah, I'm pretty sure that I have some of the qualities of an intuitive channel. We won't know for sure until we look at your Neo profile. And that's one of the reasons, one of the important reasons that I'm offering these intuitive channel profile sessions right now. And we also have to understand what are the barriers that are keeping you from that? So we can look at, in the Neo, we see this, I can see perfectionism. I can see worrying about what other people are gonna think of me. I can see worrying about rocking the boat and losing my status or losing my place in the community, getting kicked out of my tribe. I can see mental health issues that might suggest that people would think you're crazy if you start channeling. Your nervous system is so important when it comes to becoming the channel. And if your nervous system is not refined, if your nervous system is not clear, if your nervous system is running hot or you're running in addictions, or if it's depressed, if it's stressed, you'll be channeling something, but it won't be wealth consciousness. <laughs> you'll be channeling some beings who are less particular about who they choose to partner with. So you'll be channeling lower frequency beings if you choose to partner with somebody because there are those who will take advantage of mental health issues in humans and hijack their, their bodies, their, their consciousness in order to wreak havoc, create chaos. And those are not the beings that you are meant to be channeling, as you know, but it is important for you to make sure your nervous system is crystal clear so that A, there's no room for any low frequency shenanigans, we'll call them, ne'er-do-wells, we'll call them, to even have access to you, first of all. But secondly, the invitation for these high-frequency benevolent beings and the honor of it, the honor of it is tremendous. And I don't say that in like a subservient way at all. I just was remembering that when Marisol came in, and we've been working together for the last couple of weeks very intimately. And I remember at one point I was like, so honored because I, I know how true her frequency is. And I'm so honored that I've reached a point of my own frequency being so clean that she's able to come in and we're able to share space and we're able to do this work together. And it's one of the most beautiful, astounding things I've ever experienced. It feels amazing. Way better than any glass of wine. But unless and until the nervous system is crystal clear, the high frequency beings want to be partnering with us, but they're waiting for us to come forward to raise our frequency enough to be able to accommodate their high frequency so that they don't blow our systems out. If you think a high frequency comes in, a high frequency being comes in and your nervous system is a mess, it's gonna blow your circuits. And then you will end up in a mental institution. And I don't say that to activate anything for you. I'm just saying that the likelihood of some kind of mental disturbance that comes from channeling a being or a frequency that is a mismatch for your, for your energy field, for your nervous system, can create the conditions for you to look like you're going a little bit crazy 
or you, that you're losing your mind. And it can be misinterpreted by medical professionals who do not understand what's actually happening. So we have a responsibility to ourselves, to these benevolent beings who are inviting us to work with them, to partner with them, to collaborate with them so that they can be on the planet in human form and be even more effective at what they're, what they're all about, which is restoring humanity's freedoms and sovereignty on this planet. So we have a responsibility and we have a responsibility toward our own bodies and our own souls, our own consciousness to do the same. And this is one of the reasons that Marisol and I have brought through the spiritual intelligence codes that were transmitted on October 22nd. And we'll be sure to put the link in the, in the show notes for you to be able to access those codes because those codes actually activate and open up your intuitive channel. See, all of these blocks that you have, whether it's perfectionism or I'm afraid of rocking the boat or any of the neuroticism factor features like anxiety, depression, angry hostility, self-consciousness, impulsivity, or just flat out sensitivity to stress, all of those are being very gently overridden with new high frequency energies that just clean out this whole intuitive channel that go from your wise heart, the brain in your heart, and there's ganglia in your heart that are actually, it's actually called the brain's heart, all the way up through the vagus nerves, into the medulla, into the limbic system, and then flourishes in this beautiful etheric brain behind you as a big sunflower. And it gives you access to all of your wisdom that's available to you through your perspective. It connects you in with your intuitive channel. So anything that runs contrary to the intuitive channel is going to pinch it off. And those, those are the things that I mentioned. Another one that can pinch off your intuitive channel is the fear of what your colleagues are going to think. If you come out as an intuitive channel, they're not going to respect you, or they're going to think that you're not credible anymore. And I have it on best authority, my own, that it is possible to be both spiritually intelligent and, and professionally esteemed. And by the way, there comes a point as you develop your muscles around intuitive channeling that the fear of being thought crazy gives way to the certainty that the information that's coming through is so clear and so important that that becomes the primary focus rather than what somebody thinks about what you're doing. They have a choice. And I find more often than not, when somebody is projecting something onto me, it is a projection of their own fears, usually because, by the way, they have these abilities too, and their abilities scare them because they are afraid that they're going to lose it all or that they will not be viewed as credible or that their professionalism will be questioned or they just want to do their day job. I have many physicians who are spiritually adept, who have the capability to be channels. And they say, I just want to do my job. And I say, what if this is your job? So the projections that they have onto me, that it bothers them that I'm channeling Marisol, who is by, quite delightful, I think, don't you? But the projections that they have about who I channel is about them. It's not about me. It's not about Robin. It's not about Marisol. It's about them. And it's about their own fears. And it can be very confronting, especially when you are actually called to channel and you are resisting it. But it doesn't have to be. That's why I'm here. The more you understand about your nervous system and your personality as a whole, the more you understand how you're wired to channel, why you're wired to channel, what you're meant to be channeling, 
You don't have to leave your, your field of study, your area of expertise in order to become the channel. But what you do have, what you are invited to consider is that whatever is next for you in your field will be exponentially more elegant, graceful, and meaningful when you finally acknowledge that this is actually your true calling. I've had a couple of people recently listen to these podcasts who are highly educated, esteemed professionals in their field, who are saying privately to me, I just realized after listening to these episodes that I channel. It's taken them years to understand that, but this is the reason that I'm doing these episodes. The one with Andrea a couple of weeks ago, I have a couple more coming up with Baljeet and some of my other colleagues to really help you understand the importance of this calling. And it is a calling. There are some people who are wired for it and it could be you, it probably is you. Okay, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and close for today. Your initiation into your calling as a channel, as an intuitive channel is here. Your invitation is here. I'm looking forward to hearing from you in my email. We'll put my email in the show notes. It's robin at drrobinmckay.com. You write to me, you reach out. If you are leaning in, if you're questioning this, it's time that we have the conversation. It's time to do your profile so you know. Because once you know, then we can soothe the very human part of you who wants to know that you won't go crazy. Or maybe you have had a diagnosis in the past, and maybe that's why you're pressing back on your calling. Let me look at your Neo, and I'll tell you, I will tell you the truth about it. You can tell me your story about your diagnosis, and I will show you the nuances of it that maybe other people weren't able to see because they didn't have this lens of spiritual intelligence that I look through. And maybe that will make all the difference for you. I am sending you all my love. I will see you in the Facebook group. And I look forward to discovering with and for you what your profile is for your intuitive channel. Until next time.